Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating a quite important and uh, heavily used concept in financial practice and in quantitative finance, which is exponential smoothing and its applications to expected return and variance and covariance calculations. Exponential smoothing has a very simple idea behind it. That is, if you have got a very long sample of historical data and you want to generate some inferences with regards to the distribution of asset returns, for example, then it is quite um, natural to assume that for very near future, the very recent observations would be more relevant than very distant observations. For example, something that happened the day before yesterday would surely be more relevant than something that happened five years ago. And to uh, illustrate the applications of exponential smoothing and the mathematics behind it, as well as its Excel implementation, we'll have a look at six well-established US stocks over the five-year sample from the start of 2017 until year-end 2021. And uh, first, let's calculate just the average returns for uh, all of our uh, stocks and annualize them to compare them with uh, the exponential smoothing results. And here, the uh, more uh, natural, the more robust way would be to use logarithmic returns. So let's just uh, use the natural logarithm of the ratio between consecutive prices to calculate our returns and uh, apply it for all six sample stocks and throughout the whole of the sample period. And one of the uh, benefits, again, of log returns is that we can use the arithmetic average to perform our calculations and not care about geometric means or the product function. So we just average over the full sample for each and every of our sample stocks. And then to annualize log returns, we can just multiply it by 252, typical number of trading days in a year. And now to exponentially smooth our average returns, we need to discuss the decay factor, which is most commonly called lambda. Uh, and uh, this is a very uh, common property uh, in quantitative finance, especially when you're dealing with very large samples. And uh, another application of that would be in BFW uh, VAR, uh, a video on which we have already got on our channel. So check this out after you watched this video, if you're interested in this particular method application for value at risk. And lambda, um, in simple terms, is just a decay factor which uh, tells you how much less relevant uh, an observation one day uh, further into the past is. And again, mathematically, it can be any number between 0 and 1. 1 would mean that all observations are equally important. Uh, 0 would mean that just the most recent observation, the single observation that happened yesterday, is the most important. Most commonly you pick a number that's closer to one than to zero because alternatively everything that is uh, even slightly remote would be weighted with a factor of approximately zero. And uh, uh, again the most uh, heavily utilized range is between 0 0.95 and 0 0.99 with 0 0.975 being a quite um, common benchmark to utilize. So to perform our application, we first have to go to the very bottom uh, row and input one there as the most recent day, well, arguably yesterday, is the most important of all of them days. And uh, at the very start, we'll need to input that the weighting factor, the relevance of uh, one day further back in time is the relevance of the next day times lambda. And lambda needs to be locked and that can be dragged all the way down until we reach the very final cell and that automatically performs our exponential smoothing for us with uh, days further and further uh, back in time being less and less relevant as you can see here with the weighting factor decaying further and further 
However, how to apply this particular um, decay factor to the average returns for calculating the mean returns uh, using our previous log return calculations? Well, it's quite easy, to be totally honest, and involves just the usual sum product function. We would not treat those observations as equally important but weigh the more recent observations with higher weighting factors as per our decay parameter as our decay parameter or our weighting is the same for all six stocks we will lock it throughout and then to adjust it we'll just divide it by the sum of those weighting factors and that results in an exponentially smooth average return that we can drag across and calculate it for each and every of our stocks. So here we can see quite an interesting uh, occurrence with uh, the returns of Pepsi and Pfizer being quite a bit larger and Chevron as well, whereas returns for other three stocks are negative, whereas they are positive in the full sample. What is happening here? Well, obviously, as the decay factor is 0 0.975, which prioritizes uh, things that happened uh, towards the end of the sample period, we know that, well, Pfizer is a pharmaceutical stock and they performed quite well after the pandemic and during it. Uh, Pepsi is a consumer staple stock and it performs well subject to increased uncertainty. Whereas, well, Chevron is an energy stock and, well, the energy markets have been um, appreciating over the past year at least. Whereas tech stocks, financial stocks, and industrial stocks are not doing as well recently. So this particular uh, exponential smoothing calculation has got um, quite an interesting and uh, relevant interpretation in terms of different sectoral performance, I guess. And uh, scaling it up, uh, annualizing it by a factor of 252 is also something that can be done quite easily. However, uh, the interpretation of the decay factor can be quite challenging in terms of what it means uh, conceptually. Uh, most uh, commonly, uh, practitioners want to have some correspondence between the decay factor and the uh, relevant rolling window period. Uh, as, uh, again, uh, most of the time uh, you need some uh, interpretation of what uh, a lambda factor of 0 0.975 is. And here we can utilize a concept of half-life based on uh, a similar uh, subject in physics and uh, uh, think about it the following way. What is the lambda coefficient, the uh, speed of decay, if you will, uh, so that half of our weight is placed on the first t days? And this is already a very intuitive correspondence between rolling window periods and exponentially smooth calculations. So for example, if you want half of your mass, half of your estimation uh, weight to be placed on the first or most recent 252 days, so a year, the lambda that would correspond to it is 0 0.5, which is a half, to the power of 1 over 252, which would result in a lambda of 0 0.9973. And if we input that as our lambda coefficient, our results would adjust, adjust automatically. And what we need to do now is uh, translate the same concept into the calculation of variance and covariance and the matrices uh, that are very commonly quoted in portfolio management and investment management. So for uh, that, uh, we'll need demeaned returns, meaning that we'll subtract from the uh, realized returns in particular days, our exponentially smoothed averages, locking the rows here, not the columns, that would mean that as our demand returns are not uh, average out to zero, that would potentially uh, constitute an issue. However, if we keep in mind how we arrived at the exponentially smooth averages, and that will apply the same exponential smoothing to our covariance and variance calculations, we can illustrate the following property of those uh, demeaned exponentially smooth returns. If we consider not the simple average of those, but the sum product of those exponentially uh, smooth demeaned returns, as well as the decay factor, that would return a number which is, well, for all intents and purposes, zero. And that's why 
the exponentially smooth demand returns go very nicely into the calculation of exponentially smooth variance and covariance. However, to figure out um, the differences that uh, our exponential smoothing uh, entails for the covariance calculation, we can first um, input the traditional, the conventional covariance matrix, just revising uh, one of the methods. And here I'll be using the index method for both approaches. So let's take the population covariance here for better comparability between our traditional and our exponentially smooth covariance and refer to the index of our first um, row of returns, not demeaned returns for the conventional covariance. You don't need to input that. And then input our first identificator, which is in a cell W19, locking the row here, and then going all the way to the final row of returns here, locking it throughout as well. And that constitutes the first array of returns would input into the covariance function. The second one would be the same apart from the identification variable. And here that would be cell V20 with the column locked instead. And as we care about annualized covariances, we'll just multiply by 252. And that can be dragged across and down, resulting in a symmetric and very nice conventional covariance matrix. In terms of the exponentially smooth covariance matrix, we just need to uh, remember the definition of covariance and uh, rigorously apply our decay factor there. As covariance is the expectation of the product of deviations to two variables from their means or expected values, we can simply uh, plug that in and uh, in terms of the weightings in terms of the probabilities for the expectation use our weighting factors based on the decay factor lambda. So we would, um, unlike in the conventional method, uh, not treat the observations as equally likely but assign some probability weight to them based on the decay factor lambda. So let's see how it's done. So here we'll also use the index function to populate our six by six covariance matrix very efficiently. And we'll use the sum product function uh, instead of the covariance function. Uh, here, just implementing the definition uh, straight away. So here we need to input the index function and now refer to these demeaned returns, the first row of demeaned returns locked throughout. Again, refer to the first index variable here in cell W28 with the row locked. And then copy that and change the first row into the very last row of demeaned returns. Then the next step is pretty much the same. We change the index variable to be cell v29 instead with the column locked. However, here we have got a third uh, array into our sum product function, which is, as you guessed, the weighting factors based on our lambda decay. And uh, to adjust it, we just need to divide it by the sum of those factors. And finally, to annualize that, we multiply by 252 to make the results comparable to our conventional covariance calculations. And then we can enforce it throughout the matrix and look at the comparison between variances and covariances of various assets. We can see that uh, if we apply the uh, exponential smoothing that results in the final year of the sample uh, being 50% of the estimation weight, uh, all of our risk calculations are actually higher. The, the variances of stocks are higher than over the course of the full sample, meaning that 2021 has been a more riskier year than average, which is perhaps unsurprising. And we can also have a look at uh, covariances as well to spot how the connections between uh, various stock returns have changed from previous five years to a sample that's more biased towards 
uh, recent events. However, a very good sanity check would be to state our lambda factor to 1 and quite quickly verify that our exponentially smooth returns when lambda is 1 are exactly equivalent to the results for conventional estimations, just simple averages, simple covariances. Very good sanity check to perform if you're unsure whether you've made it correctly. And um, also, uh, we could make our results even uh, more skewed towards the uh, present. For example, uh, making our t, our uh, half-life or uh, decay period to be 126 days, half a year, that would result in a lambda of 0 0.9945. And that would uh, translate into revised uh, values for exponentially smooth average returns and exponentially smooth covariances automatically. And that is how to apply exponential smoothing to both mean and variance for portfolio management and investment management in Excel. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos and business financial economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.